It's nice to meet you, Professor Jones, having read all your emails uh, over the last few, few days. Um, I understand the criticism from McIntyre and Mosher and Fuller and Hughes and, and other people is not that the data has been kept secret, uh, that it has been available on, on, on different data sets, uh, but your computer programs and methodology and which weather stations you've actually been putting into the papers has not been made available to them. That's the real criticism, isn't it? And, and why haven't you made uh, that information available? Because their criticism is they can't reproduce your work and agree with it or show uh, flaws in it if they haven't got those programs, the names of the weather stations, and all that information. And can I just, as a writer, say, back on back to Lord Lawson's uh, comments earlier, uh, that without the understanding of the methodology, <coughs> the peer review system is rather defunct. Well, the methods are published in the scientific papers. They're relatively simple, and there's nothing sort of in sort of rocket science in them. They're explained in the papers. Um, in terms of the, uh, the data itself, we had entered into some agreements with some red services to gain access to more data in certain parts of the world. And we put up those agreements on our website in, during this summer in response to some of the FOI requests. So we were trying to get more data in specific areas. But uh, after that um, sort of deluge of requests in July 2009, we contacted the Met Office and asked them how best it would be to try and move forward and release more of the data. So what we, we sent we, we sent out some emails and letters to Met Services around the world um, in, in November and we've got replies from many of those now and through the auspices of the Met Office we've now released 80% of the data on, on, on their website together with a program that analyzes the data produces the derived product and produces the global temperature average. Can Professor Jones answer the yeah. question I asked about the question being about the list of stations and the computer programs and the methodology? Not a, nobody's ever argued that the data wasn't available. Well, why can't your scientific papers, when they're published, why can't independent people check them for their validity? That isn't traditionally done. When you publish the paper, you don't always make the data available, you don't always make the So we have to take data. everything you do on trust? No, because we've got the agreement with the other data sets that are but, produced. But in. I'm a scientist. If I want to go and check your work as a scientist and make a name for myself by saying it's false in some way, I can't do it. Well, you can. We have made the, the, um, all the adjustments we've made to the data available in these reports. They are... 25 years old now, um, and the program that produces the, the, the global temperature average has been available from the Met Office in, in, no, I think, from, I think in we're December. Missing, we're, missing, we're missing this key point, so can you just plug on? Well, um, I, I will plug on, because I mean, I've got one of the quotes from your email, so which doesn't say, why should I make the data available to, to you when your aim is to try and find something wrong with it, to, to Hughes? Uh, that's your email. Now, that's the, that's the nature of science, isn't it? That scientists make our reputations by improving or disproving what other scientists uh, uh, have done previously. Your statement there seems to be anti-scientific, and the books that people have written around, around this issue uh, have, have persuaded me that you have not provided all the information that the programs, the weather stations, all the information available so that people can replicate your work. And saying that the data is freely available in the United States doesn't enable anybody to go through your workings and, and agree with you or disagree with you. Um, well, the, date, the list of stations, we did, make, we did make that available in 2008, so that has been on our website. How long have people been asking for it at that time? Um, you go back to some papers in 1990, aren't you, that had been kept secret? No. There was a paper in 1990, and we were asked for the data for that paper, which I was talking about in the previous question. That was made, made available straight away. Um, the, the list of stations was made available after about six months from the first FOI request in early 2007. 
So you're saying that every paper that you have produced, the computer programs, the weather stations, all the information, the codes, uh, are, have, have been publicly available <coughs> to scientists, or available to scientists, so that they could test out how good your work was. Has that, is that the case on all the papers you've produced? That's not the case on No. And why isn't it? Because it hasn't been standard practice to do that. But that takes me back to the original point, that if it's not standard practice, how can the science progress? Well, maybe it should be standard practice, but it's not standard practice across the subject. Well, can, can you explain, because I, I, I think a lot of people would like you to explain, if, as Professor Acton says, we want all this information out, can you explain uh, your, your email uh, to Hughes in, in, on the 21st of January 2005? when you should, said you aren't going to make the data available to him uh, because uh, he, he might, all he wants to do is find something wrong with it. That, that's the nature of scientific pursuit, isn't it? Uh, yes. I had, I've obviously written some very awful emails, and I, I fully admit well, that. That's very really clear. Yes, it, it is. It's clear. absolutely clear denial of this man's attempt to get at what you were doing. Yes, and I had been in discussion with him for a number of months before that trying to answer his questions. But he wanted, he wanted the data. He, he wanted the codes. He wanted all the other information, and you refused to give it to him. Why? Because we had a lot of work and resources invested in it. That was way before the FOI request started. Well, it's, I'm not, I, yeah. it's, it seems to be an attitude. I, I, I see what I think. I, science shouldn't have to rely on individuals making freedom of information requests for other scientists to be able to get to, to data. I'm, I'm not really interested in that side. I'm interested in why uh, you have, both through the freedom of information requests and to Hughes and, and uh, <coughs> to other scientists, why have you refused to give them the data? We, we have given them the gridded product so that we have the, not the, the raw station data, but the product in, 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 in grid boxes on but a But they final. can't go back... They, they cannot go back. go back to the basics, and as any scientist would want to, and say, is this right? They can't... You, you've denied them the right to check it. We have made the gridded product available from the, from the very beginning, mm. but not the raw station <coughs> data. And most scientists don't want to deal with the raw station data. They would rather deal with a derived product. Okay explore this assertion that, that this is abnormal. Um, you publish some, you do some work, let's say you're a bench cell biologist and you do some work, and you publish a paper and you send it for peer review. Um, if another group of scientists wants to see your workbooks, it's not my experience that you photocopy your workbooks, uh, your lab bench books, and send, send it to them. So I just want to clarify to what extent you're arguing that it's just your are you saying it's your unit, it wasn't standard practice, it's your field of science, or do you suspect that across the field of science it's unusual to, to, to photocopy and send out all the raw data behind papers? It's unusual in the field of science. Right. So is that just in your field? In, in climate science. So in climate science it's unusual, because that's quite an it's important becoming, It's becoming more usual now with, with, with the internet. Yes. Professor Jones, uh, I don't want to repeat uh, the previous uh, exchange we had, but I, I just would like to be clear in terms of the answers to the questions of, to Doug and, and Evan about the repeatability of uh, the works you put out. You're saying very clearly that on a lot of the papers you put out, other scientists, not that they need your, your working books, but they can't uh, repeat those, that work when those papers are, are published. Um, because they don't have the programs and the, and they the codes. They haven't got the programs or the, or, or, right. or the data. Right, so, so they can't without that. But that's just a fact of life in the, in the climate sciences. Right, that's very clear. Mm. 